Hi, and welcome to another 5-minute tip. In this tip, we're going to be looking at positioning objects to the position of another object that's already in the scene. So, to put things really simply, we're going to be taking a cone, positioning it on the end of that stick, and we're going to be taking a cylind a sphere, excuse me, and positioning it on this end of the stick. Now, of course, we can just go from all of our different views and position it sort of roughly where it needs to be, rotate it into place, but there are a few different techniques that we can look into that would make that a lot easier. The first technique, which you've probably seen in a lot of other tutorials, even some of mine, is to group your new object with the old object and then just zero the coordinates. So the way that works is really simple. You take your cone and you place it in the cylinder here. Once it's in there, you can go down to the coordinates manager down here, or the chord tab in your attributes manager, and you can basically just set the position to zero and the rotation to zero. And now it's the exact same orientation. So that's one way to do it. You can do that for the cone, you can do that for the sphere. Once you're done, you can move it out of hierarchy and then resume modeling or texturing or animating, doing whatever you were doing. This method works really well and it, it's very intuitive. The parent-child hierarchy relationship in Cinema 4D lends itself to this method being intuitive. So it works really easily and there's nothing complicated about it. It's a really good method. I'd like to show you another method. So what I'll do is I will reset these coordinates to zero on both objects, just proving that I can do it in either manager here. Okay, the second method is using a tool that's designed specifically for this. It's called the transfer tool. With one object selected, the one that you'd like to move, uh, you can pull up the transfer command. I believe it's under the tools menu, under coordinates, I'm not actually sure where it is. Here we go, it's under arrange objects. The way I usually access it is by pressing shift C and then typing transfer. What it does is it gives you a uh, sort of different cursor and you can hover over the object you'd like to transfer to. So if I have the cone selected and then I select my transfer tool, I can hover over this cylinder and click it. You can see really faintly that the cylinder has moved to the position of this, sorry, the cone has moved to the position of the cylinder. You can also toggle on and off rotation or the different axes of position. So it's a very, it's a very flexible, very powerful tool. It's also really quick. Um, you know, you can, you can just select an object. You can say, I want to use my last tool. I'd like to transfer it there and then you choose your move tool and it's done. That was actually a lot more quick than moving it into the hierarchy and then zeroing the coordinates. So that's what I actually consider a, a better method. Sometimes when you'd like to transfer your object, you can't actually click the object you want to transfer it to. But there's an option for that as well. If you select the transfer tool and you can't actually click the object you want, you can find the object in the object manager, drag it into the slot right here, and then hit apply. That actually does the exact same thing as clicking in the viewport. The final method uh, to transfer one object to the coordinates of another object is actually a relatively new feature in Cinema 4D, I think. Maxon is always adding enhancements to Cinema 4D. Sometimes it's difficult to know when a feature arrived, especially if it wasn't a flagship feature of a new version. The feature I'm talking about is the work plane management. We know that in Cinema 4D, we have the global sort of space. It's represented here by this grid. Here's the center of it. If I want to move this sphere back to the center of the workspace, uh, the global grid, if you will, I can just set its position to zero. I can hit apply and it moves there. Now, technically it's actually moving it to the world zero, but because it doesn't have a parent, 
the world is its parent. So relative positioning doesn't really work if there's no hierarchy. Now, how do these work planes work? Well, the easiest way to demonstrate that is by using a torus, in my experience. If we create a torus, we can see that it gets created on the ground as if an inner tube were laying on the ground. Fair enough, let's delete that. Over here, there's a work plane buttons. This top button is what we're gonna be focusing on. By default, it's a locked work plane. If we click this, we can say align work plane to X, at which point the entire world grid flips up on its edge. And just to prove that the world has changed, if we create a torus, it's now created on its side. It's still laying flat on the ground. We've just changed where the ground is. The default is to align it to Y, which is what we had before. Now, why does this matter? Well, we see that we can create a new object at the position of the work plane, so that's useful. Can we position the, ob the work plane to different objects? Yes, we can do that too. I'm just gonna tear this menu off so we can have it over here. And if I select our cylinder that we wanna align things to, I can then click align work plane to selection. At that point, the work plane, or in other words, the world grid gets aligned to the cylinder. At that point, I can just create a cone, create a sphere, and I'm done. I don't have to do any additional positioning because all of my positioning was done when the objects were created. When I'm done, I can just click align work plane to Y. Everything goes back to normal. This is good, but it works. It really works best when you're creating new objects. If you are transferring an existing object to the position of another existing object, the transfer tool may work better for you. But this can do something the transfer tool cannot do. Let's check it out. If I select the main cylinder in my hierarchy, and then I select these polygons at the top, you can tell I was rehearsing this tutorial, they're already selected. So let's just do that. I can click and drag to select these polygons at the top. Now if I were to move my axis widget here by right clicking it to normal, you can see that it sort of points in the direction like that. And that's useful to know. I'm gonna switch it back to the axis mode for now. Now with these polygons selected, if I click align work plane to selection, selection in this context is not the cylinder, it's the group of polygons. So I can click that. Now my work plane is aligned to the polygons that I have selected. Very useful because now I can create a torus, for example, scale it down and it's perfectly aligned with that extremely arbitrary group of polygons. And this is really useful for when you're modeling things at strange angles. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do with work planes, but I think I'll save that for other videos. In this one, I just wanted to show you a few different ways how you can move objects to the position of other objects. I'm gonna reset my work plane to the default Y, and I hope you enjoyed this tip. Until next time, see ya.